Hello and welcome to the Atoll, your home for Waterworld fandom. On today's video, we'll be looking at everything we know about the Smoker's Hellfire Gunner Boat, the crown jewel in the Deacon's Battle Armada. So let's begin by breaking down the Hellfire's actual appearance within the film. We are first introduced to the Hellfire as the Smoker Armada is moving into battle position around the Atoll after the infantry jet skis and power ski units have made their initial attacks upon the unexpecting Atollers. Let's now turn to the novelization of Waterworld for a description of the Hellfire. The Hellfire gunboat was a barge onto which the deacon had bolted the remains of an ancient vehicle called a truck with the word Mac on its prowl, and on the truck's flatbed, manned by the deacon's best gunner, was a wonderful weapon. The death-spitting mechanical demon gave the Hellfire gunboat its name. The Elephantine machine gun had a cluster of rotating barrels that discharged 20mm rounds successively as it rotated around an axis. The result was simple. Hellfire. The deacon tells his flag boys to signal the Hellfire to quote give them the keys to the city. At this visual signal the Hellfire unleashes its horrible wrath upon the walls of the atoll. The quad mounted machine guns rip through the barrier like tissue paper, laying waste anything or anyone that happens to enter its path. However, the trigger happy Hellfire gunner soon runs into trouble as his guns jam up. He demands that the deckhands swab the muzzles to get the war machine firing again. Later on in the battle, the deacon spots Gregor escaping in his chair balloon. He has his flag boy signal to the Hellfire to shoot him out of the sky. The Hellfire gunner raises the barrels of his mighty military machine to the ascending flying vehicle, but as he pulls the trigger, a smoker berserker on a jet ski flies into the line of destruction. The jet ski explodes as it gets caught in the crossfire, but allows for Gregor to make a narrow escape from the wrath of the Hellfire. At the end of the battle, as the mariner is escaping on his trimaran, the Hellfire continues to mindlessly pummel the side of the atoll with its horrible strength. This gives the mariner an idea. Moving to the bow of his trimaran, the mariner takes aim at the hull of the Hellfire with his harpoon gun. He fires and snags the unexpecting warship. The Hellfire gunner, blinded by the soot of diesel fuel and machine gun fire, continues to shoot madly as he and the Hellfire are pulled away from the atoll and into the path of the refueler barge. Seeing the appending destruction, his smoker cousins yell at him to stop firing, but to no avail. The bullets cut across the water, taking out a few misfortunate jet skiers. Then the inevitable geometry connects, and the gunfire meets the flammable refueler barge with a massive explosion as the deacon dives for cover. Alright, now that we have an overview of the Hellfire's appearance in the film, let's go back and take a look at the specifics of this maniacal movie vehicle. In the making of Waterworld book, prop master Michael Milgram says the Hellfire wasn't really a boat but rather a barge that measured about 80 feet in length. It was motorized by a Mack truck connected to an enormous gear driven paddle system that powered the back. It looks something like a gambling boat going up the Mississippi River. And indeed, it does appear that the Hellfire was propelled forward by a giant rotating drum at the stern of the ship with tires connected to it. Milgram also points out that the Hellfire was equipped with four 50 caliber machine guns firing, at least hypothetically, D's made bullets. What he means by this is that the smokers are actually manufacturing their own bullets and indeed, in the extended cut of the film and novelization, we can see that the smokers are smelting their own ammunition. This is also probably why we get a shot of the smoker rapidly collecting dispelled gun shells on the Hellfire. These shells will be recycled into new ammo for future smoker escapades. The Making of Waterworld book also points out that the Hellfire gunboat's four machine guns were built on a vintage World War II assault mount manufactured by Heckler and Koch, and were capable of firing 600 rounds per minute. But I have to say, I think this information is actually false. The German company Heckler & Koch, from my research, never actually produced any anti-aerial quad machine gun weapons. 
I believe that the Hellfire gunboats for machine guns were actually built off a Browning M2 aircraft quad mount. This weapon, also known as an M45 quad mount, is a United States World War II developed weapon that combines four M2 50 caliber machine guns into a terrifying single super weapon used to shoot enemy fighter planes out of the air. This also leads to another interesting fact. The actor that plays the Hellfire Gunner, Neil Juntali, also fired an M2 machine gun in the 1991 film Memphis Bell, where he plays an anti-aircraft gunner aboard a B-17 bomber during World War II. I suspect this is probably why he landed his role in Waterworld. Interestingly, according to the Making of Waterworld book, the Hellfire did not actually shoot blanks, but instead discharged quote, cardboard wads of waterproofing, which from what I can tell is another safe way to create a muzzle flash from a gun barrel while on the set of a film. As for the bullet hit effects on the water in the atoll walls, this involved incredible amount of work from Marty Breeson and his special effects team. On a heavy effects day, the team would pull off about 3,000 bullet hit effects. The initial shot of the bullet spraying the side of the atoll would alone have 1,200 bullet hit effects. To achieve this, miles of wire were laid, connecting the individual bullet hit effects and launchable shrapnel to a nail board. When the shot was ready to be filmed, the nail board would work as a switch panel, setting off the many effects in the proper sequence. For the bullet hits in the water, the team used a mixture of pyrotechnic squibs and a network of pipes to blast air cannons underneath the water. It was incredibly time consuming for the effects team to reset these effects from their production boats out at sea. For this reason, the film had the largest effects team ever put together for a single film, with as many as 154 special effects technicians working at one time. But where else can we spot the Hellfire in the expanded universe of Waterworld? Well, let's start with the Fleer Ultra trading cards, of which there are two dedicated to the Hellfire. Number 40 Hellfire gives us a very nice photograph of the back paddle wheel of the vessel, and there's also number 143 Hellfire Gunner Boat, which gives us a front view of the war machine. The Hellfire also makes an appearance on the back glass of the pinball machine, as well as several promotional materials and posters, like my large canvas banner I have from my VHS promo collection. If you'd like to see that whole collection, check out my video on the Waterworld Video Store promo collection. The Hellfire also makes several appearances in the video games as well. In the Super NES version of Waterworld, we can see the Hellfire in the Trimoran sailing sections of the game, though it's lacking the giant tire paddle in the barge's stern. The Sega Genesis version of Waterworld alludes to the Hellfire in the score calculating screens after the Trimoran sections, but it's sadly not in the actual levels. This is probably due to the fact that the Genesis version of the game was never actually released, and the Hellfire enemy sprite was probably never added to the game. As for the Virtual Boy version of Waterworld, the Hellfire can be clearly seen on this promotional poster given away in Nintendo Power Magazine, but the Hellfire is nowhere to be found in the actual game. And finally, the Hellfire can be spotted in the cancelled on-rails shooter game that was to be released for the 3DO Interactive Multiplayer and the Atari Jaguar. This footage came from a demo disc that was published before the game's cancellation. If you'd like to learn more about the released and unreleased video games of Waterworld, be sure to check out my video on that entire history. And believe it or not, the Hellfire actually makes its way into the pages of Waterworld Children of Leviathan comic book. If you look closely at the underwater scene in issue 1, you can spot the four barrels of the machine gun sticking up from the sea floor. But before I close out this video, I would just like to ask, because it's always stood out to me, does it seem like a pig's scream was added to this clip to heighten the Hellfire Gunner's insanity? <laughs> Well, I guess there's a reason that Waterworld was nominated for one Oscar, Best Sound Mixing. Well, there you have it. That's everything we know about the Hellfire Gunboat. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's a great way to let me know that there's other Waterworld fans out there. And thanks, as always, for joining me at the A-Toll.